Hi, everybody. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to put all of those sign number rules together, and we're going to apply the order of operations, excuse me, to sign numbers. So let's get started. Now we've already done the order of operations. So I'm just putting in parentheses with sign numbers just to show that we're doing something a little bit different. Um, but your rules for the order of operations are not going to change. So they're exactly the same as they always have been. It's just that now we're going to apply them with integers as well. Um, and again, right now we're just focusing on integers. We're not gonna bring in um, a lot of fraction or decimal work just yet. We will get to that soon enough. Um, so we're gonna focus there. Now for the order of operations, let's review the procedure. So the first thing you typically do is you're going to perform all operations inside any sort of grouping symbols. So typically these are parentheses, but they could be brackets, uh, we've seen absolute values now, um, and so on. So also roots or radicals, which we'll see in a little bit. Um, so any sort of grouping symbol. Again, typically they're going to be parentheses, but any grouping symbol would apply here. So your second step is to clear out any exponents that you have. So to do any of those powers. Your third step is to multiply and divide. And remember, you have to work from left to right. That's really important. So multiplication and division are equals. They go together. So whatever one comes first in the problem, you do that first. And then last, adding and subtracting. Um, so we'll say, we'll just say adding and subtracting. And just like before, you're going to work from left to right there. So those are equals. It's really important to just go in order of the problem. Now, some students remember the order of operations using that acronym PEMDAS. So you can remember it here. So P stands for parentheses, but again, any grouping symbol is included. And you want to remember that you're doing inside the grouping symbol. So sometimes we use parentheses for multiplication. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about when there's something to do inside the parentheses. Next, you do your exponents. Then you have your multiplication and division and you're adding and subtracting. And again, just be careful if you're using this PEMDAS or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, that's another one people often learn. Um, just remember that you know MD and AS, they do work left to right. So multiplication does not always come before division and adding doesn't always come before subtracting. Um, this is just a way to us to generally remember the steps. So just keep that little warning in mind there. Now, the other thing you may want to review as well are all your rules for your um, different signed numbers, right? So if again, if you're not comfortable with the signed number rules yet, you may wanna stop this video at this point, go back and rewatch all the videos on adding and subtracting, multiplying and dividing signed numbers, because you're really gonna need to know those rules very, very well in order to do okay in this section, right? Because we're putting all the rules together. So if you don't know them, you're gonna really struggle here. So pause if you need to, go back and review those videos and do some practice if, again if you need to before you come back to putting it all together. So I'm just going to do a very quick review of the rules for sign numbers here as well before we get started. 
Um, and again, this is something that you may want to just put on an index card, like a little note card and keep it with you for now until you get really, really comfortable with them. They should be automatic. So you want to get to that point where you're not even thinking anymore. It's just like you're getting the answers really quickly. That's the point you want to get to with sign numbers. Um, and because we're going to work with them all semester. So if you're struggling on the rules here, you're going to make mistakes on other topics. So you really want to make sure you have those down pat. Um, so the first one is addition or adding. And there are two rules here. So if you have the same signs, we just add the numbers and keep the sign. So for example, four plus six stays positive 10, or negative three plus negative two becomes negative five. So if you have the same sign, you just add and keep the sign. If you have different signs, this is the tricky one, you're going to subtract the numbers and take the sign of the number with the larger absolute value. Uh, or another way we thought of before is um, whatever there is more of, right? More negatives, more positives. So let me do an example here. So let's say you have negative eight plus four. So here I have different signs, one negative, one positive. I'm going to subtract eight minus four is just four. And absolute value of negative eight is bigger than the absolute value of four. So what happens is there are more negatives, right? I have eight negatives and only four positives. So this is gonna stay negative. Another example, let's say I had a positive six plus a negative uh, four. Again, I have different signs, so I'm going to subtract. I get two. Here I have six positives and only four negatives, so it's going to stay positive. Now for subtracting, we didn't actually have any really real rules. We changed this to addition, remember. So what we do is we change to addition and change the next number to its opposite sign. So another way to remember this is to keep change, change. So you keep the first number the same, change it to addition, change the next number to the other sign. So for example here, if I have eight minus nine, I'm going to keep the first number the same, change my minus sign to addition, and that positive nine becomes negative. And now you just use your regular adding rules. So we get negative one here. Or for instance, let's say if I had negative four minus, oops, that was minus negative five, negative four stays, that minus sign changes to addition here, and the negative five becomes positive. So now I have a positive one in this case. Okay. Or I'll do one more. Let's say we have two minus negative three, Again, my first number stays the same. Subtraction changes to addition, and then my negative changes to positive. So I have positive five. And actually, I'll go to the next page here. I was hoping to fit them all on one page, but do one more and we'll move on. So this is your easiest one. With multiplying and dividing, remember that your negatives cancel in twos. Okay. So if you have a positive times a positive or a negative times a negative, you get a positive answer. 
Or if you have a positive divided by a positive or a negative divided by a negative, again, you also get a positive answer back out. If you have a positive times a negative or a negative times a positive, get a negative out. And if you have a positive divided by a negative or a negative, negative divided by a positive, then you get a negative back out. So they cancel on twos. If you have two negatives, they cancel out. So for example, if I have negative six times negative two, I would end up with negative, sorry, positive, excuse me, 12. Two negatives cancel out, I get a positive and six times two is 12. If I had something like negative eight times positive three, well, eight times three is 24, I only have one negative, so it stays. For division, let's say I have negative 12 divided by negative four. So I have two negatives that are gonna cancel and become positive and 12 divided by four is three. Or let's say I have something like six divided by negative three. Well, six divided by three is two and I only have one negative, so it has to stay. Now also watch out for your exponents here, right? So we did a little bit of work with exponents and being careful. So let's say I have negative three in parentheses squared. So remember if you have parentheses, the whole thing is being squared. So that whole thing gets rewritten. Negative three times negative three becomes positive nine. If I have negative three squared, well, what happens is this negative just tags along on the outside and then that three squared becomes three times three. So here I only have one negative, so it does not cancel and it tags along. If I have negative two to the third power, again, I have parentheses, so I'm gonna write that out three times. Two times two times two is eight. And what happens here is two of my negatives will cancel, but I still will have one negative left over. So my answer would be negative eight or something like negative two to the third power. Here, my negative is outside, so I just tag that on. And then I have two times two times two. And again, here that negative tags on. So these end up both being negative eight, but for different reasons. All right, so that is my review. Um, hopefully, again, you're feeling ready to go on further and do some more examples. Um, so let's actually get started. I'm gonna just go to a clean page here. So let's just do another exponent example here. I don't even have any negatives, just kind of a review. So if you need to, what you can do is keep out the first couple pages of your notes, um, write down those order of operation rules again. So just going to go through the list every single time, one step at a time. Are there any grouping symbols? Are there exponents? Then multiply, divide, then add and subtract. So here I don't have any grouping symbols, but I do have an exponent. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this exponent piece first. So that's four times four, which is 16. So I end up with two times 16, which is just 32. Maybe if I wanna bring in a negative here, I could do something like two uh, parentheses, negative four squared. So notice that there's no symbol in between, but that automatically means multiplication. I do have parentheses, but there's nothing to do inside, right? This parenthesis is just here to show that I have a negative. So there's nothing to do inside, and I'm going to move over onto my exponents here. So here I have negative 4 times negative 4, which also happens to be positive 16 in this case. So I end up with the same answer, but again, it's a different way that we get there, right? It's not the same strategy. All right, let's do another example. Kind of 
Just keep doing a bunch of different kinds of examples here with order of operations. I'll start simple and get more complex. So maybe we have something like negative eight times three over negative two. Now here I have multiplication and I have division. Typically when we have fractions though, we clean up the numerator first and then the denominator and then do the division at the end. So remember that fraction bar is also a kind of a grouping symbol in the sense that you wanna do the numerator first, the denominator, and then do the division at the end here. So up top, I'm just gonna do eight times negative three, which is negative 24. And then I just have a negative two on the bottom. Now I'm going to go ahead and divide. 24 divided by two is 12. And my two negatives here do cancel out. Negative divided by a negative becomes a positive. So now you can see that knowing those rules is important, right? Because I'm not spending so much time thinking about my sign rules. I'm, I'm trying to process through the order of operations here. So you really do want to know those sign rules. All right, how about negative 18 plus six over negative three minus one? Again, I have that fraction bar, so I'm gonna do my numerator and denominator separately. I don't have too much going on though. I just have addition in the top. So negative 18 plus six is gonna be negative 12. I have different signs, so I subtract those values and I have more negative, so it stays negative. In the bottom here, we can rewrite this. So if I see subtraction sign, I can keep the first number the same, change it to addition, and change that one to negative one. So I'm gonna get negative four then for my answer. Now, other students like to do that, keep change, change right in the problem, that's fine too. So keep the negative three, change to addition, change positive one to negative one. So you could also do it right on the problem. Just make sure you're nice and neat. And then now my two negatives cancel and I just have three. All right, so another example here. Again, I have parentheses, but nothing on the inside. So that's what the grouping symbols really are for. So I'm gonna move on from that. And I do see, I do have to do my exponent first. So I have parentheses around the exponent. So the whole thing is getting multiplied out in this case, three times. So two of my negatives will cancel. I'll still have one left over. And then three times three is nine times three is 27. So my problem becomes 90 plus 20 plus negative 27. Now I just have addition left, so I'm just going to work from left to right here. 90 plus 20, that is 110. And now I have different signs, so I am going to subtract. So you may want to go do this off to the side. Now when you subtract, don't worry about what's positive or negative. Just set it up like a regular subtraction problem first. So you have to do your regular borrowing that we've done and then go back and think about the sign. So here I have 110 positives and only 27 negatives. So there's definitely more positives. So my answer will be positive here. All right, so another example. Here I do actually have a true parenthesis where I can do something on the inside. So I'm gonna do that first. I see subtraction, so I'm going to do the keep change change. I'm gonna keep the six the same. I'm going to change it to addition and I'm going to make that positive 10 a negative 10. Now I'm doing it inside the problem here, but if you want to rewrite it, you can rewrite that step. So do whatever's easier for you. Now six plus negative, so this is six plus negative 10, right? So I have different signs. I'm gonna to subtract to get four. I have more negative, so this becomes negative four. Now I do have parentheses here, but there's nothing to do on the inside. This one here represents multiplication. This one here is just to clarify a negative. So sometimes we put parentheses around negatives, other times we don't. Um, so this one, I don't have to do anything with. I do have to multiply these though. 
So after parentheses would come exponents. I don't have exponents. So next is multiplication and division. Negative three times negative four, my two negatives cancel. I have positive 12. And then I'm just gonna bring everything else down. So I do have a minus sign there. I do adding and subtracting going left to right. So positive 12 plus negative four is a positive eight. And then here I just have eight minus five, which is three. Now, if you wanna do that, keep change, change, you can there, um, but eight minus five is just a regular subtraction. So we can do it that way as well. I'm just gonna do a couple more examples. And again, we could do hundreds of these, right? We're just kind of going through a few of them again. So let's do negative three times the absolute value of negative eight minus negative four plus five squared. All right, divided by negative five. All right, so let's get started here. Um, I do see some parentheses, but these two really just mean to clarify we have a negative. However, I do see an absolute value. An absolute value, if there's anything they can do on the inside, you would do that first. Um, so the only thing I can do here with the absolute value is I can clear this out. The absolute value of negative eight is positive eight. So remember these vertical lines are absolute value symbols. This becomes positive eight. So I'm just gonna rewrite this. So my parentheses on the inside are all done. I'm gonna do my exponent next. So this is five times five, which is 25. And my exponents are done now. And I'm gonna move on to multiplying and dividing. I'm gonna do this from left to right. So I do see some multiplication here, and then I also see some division here. And they're not touching each other, so I can just go right in order, left to right. I'm gonna do this both in the same step. Negative three times eight would be negative 24. And then 25 divided by negative five would be negative five. Notice that I'm just being careful to stay everything else in order and bring it right down. All right, left, I see subtraction and addition. So I'm gonna work from left to right here. You really wanna be careful that you don't change up the order or else you'll get the wrong answer. So here I see we're subtracting a negative. So I'm gonna keep change to addition, change this to positive four. And again, if you find that too messy, then you can just rewrite it. Negative 24 plus positive four is negative 20. I'm gonna bring down this negative five and I get a final answer of negative 25. All right, so here's one last example on order of operations. And again, at any time throughout the video, if you want to pause this, try it on your own first, see if you get the same answer as me, that could be good practice for you. So here's where we have parentheses inside of brackets. So when you have grouping symbols that are nested like this, it's called nested, one inside of another, you work inside to outside. So I'm going to start right here on the innermost parentheses. I do see subtraction, so I'm going to change it to addition. I'm gonna change that positive eight to negative eight. And I'm gonna simplify that first. So let's just rewrite everything else, being careful to stay in order. Five plus negative eight is negative three. Now I know I have an exponent, but I have to finish this set of brackets first. Brackets are also included as grouping symbols. So I'm gonna use the order of operations inside of it. So I do see addition and I see multiplication here. So the multiplication has to go next. Six times negative three is negative 18. 
again, we got to finish this piece here. So negative one, and then I have negative four plus negative 18, same signs. I'm just going to add them. I get negative 22. And now I've done everything I can on the inside of that bracket. So I'm ready to move on. After your grouping symbols come your exponents. So I am going to go ahead and do my exponent next. You want to be careful. This minus sign is out front. Um, it's just like a negative that's out front. Minus signs and negatives, you want to start thinking as being the same thing. They really are interchangeable. Um, so it's not part of the square. It doesn't become a negative times a negative. It's not in parentheses. So what we have is a minus sign. And then this 10 squared is 10 times 10, which is 100. So I lost my one there. Sorry, guys. Um, here, I'm going to go ahead and multiply. Negative 1 times negative 22 is a positive 22. And finally, I'm going to change that subtraction over to addition, make my 100 negative. Now, I have different signs here, so I have to subtract. So when I set it up, again, don't worry about what's positive, what's negative. 100 has to go on top if I subtract so that I can correctly borrow. So forget about the sign, just put the bigger number on top without the sign. And then that way you'll be able to go ahead um, and subtract. So now I get 78 and then go back and think about the sign. Well, I want more negative, so it's gonna be negative 70 still. So there's my final answer there, okay? One other thing to note here is I did have a negative one out front. Sometimes we won't put the one in. So if you ever see something like a negative next to another number like this. So a negative next to a negative. Just remember that means multiplication here. And then negative times a negative is a positive. So you can always put a one in if you need it, um, but it still works, two negatives cancel out and you get 22. So you may see it that way as well. All right, so the last thing I want to do is just a couple more examples um, with order of operations, but kind of taking it to the next step. So here we're going to evaluate. So let's evaluate. Two X squared minus Y plus or Z or X equals negative one, Y equals negative three, bring out a room and Z equals, uh, we'll say positive two. So remember, I'm just gonna replace all of those variables with my values. So I have two, and then I'm gonna use a parenthesis when I evaluate. So I'm gonna plug in that negative one. And that x is being squared. So the negative one, the whole thing is being squared. Don't forget your minus sign. And then my y value is negative three. And my z value here is positive two. And now you're going to apply your order of operations. So I do have lots of parentheses, but there's nothing on the inside to do here. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep simplifying after that. My next thing is my exponent. So let me use a different color. You want to be careful. You're not going to do two times negative one. You need to do the exponent first here. So that is negative one times negative one. So negative one times negative one is positive one. So I have two times one minus negative three plus four times two. All of my exponents are done. So now I'm going to move on to multiplication and division. I just have um, multiplication here and here. So two times one is two. And four times two is eight. Finally, I have addition and subtraction left. So I can go ahead and change this over to adding a positive. And again, if you find that too confusing, just rewrite it. So we get two plus three is obviously five. And then five plus eight is gonna be 18. So when we evaluate, we're still using our order of operations here. And I want to do one more example for you guys. So I'm just going through my notes. 
And let's do find the average temperature over the past five days. And our temperatures, so this may be given to you in a table or in a uh, bar graph or something like that. I'm just gonna give them to you here. Um, but oftentimes we may see a table or a graph here and that's fine too. Um, so maybe the temperature on the first day, we'll just call this Monday, just keep it organized, was 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Maybe on Tuesday, it was eight degrees Fahrenheit. On Wednesday, it was two degrees Fahrenheit. On Thursday, it was negative five degrees Fahrenheit. And then on Friday, it was negative five degrees Fahrenheit. So remember for your average, the first thing you need to do is add everything up. So in my numerator, I'm going to add my 10, my eight, my two, my negative five and my negative five. And then we're gonna divide by the number of things we've added. So I have one, two, three, four, five days here. So I'm gonna divide by five. And this actually is an order of operations problem because you do wanna make sure that you're doing that numerator first, right? I'm just gonna put parentheses to remind you, do that first. Um, where it's all addition, you can add in any order that you want. So usually students will add their positives together first if they can. So here I have 10 plus eight plus two is 20. Here, if I add my negatives, I'll have negative 10. So 20 plus negative 10 is gonna be positive 10. And then 10 divided by five is two. So our average temperature is two degrees Fahrenheit. Now, for problems that have all addition, you can move things around. Cause remember we do have the commutative and associative properties. That does not hold once you bring in other operations. So if a problem is only addition or only multiplication for like a certain part, then you can rearrange. But you wanna be careful once you have a subtraction or, um, you know, div we have division here, but because we're working on just the numerator, it's okay. Uh, but once it gets more complicated, you really wanna follow order of operations. We only do um, rearranging if we're really sure that we can, right? So it's all addition or something like that. Um, so just, again, one more application here of how you can apply the order of operations.